Hello, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Grassroots Advocacy. It's really great to have you back if you're return, a return visitor, and we also want to welcome those folks that are viewing for the first time. I would encourage those of you that are first-time viewers to go back and review the previous uh, 13 episodes um, so that you have a more comprehensive view of grassroots advocacy. Um, up to this point, we have talked about advocating for your profession with um, potential nursing assistants. Um, that's really in the recruiting process. We've talked about advocating with your fellow nursing assistants who are working on the floor alongside of you. And we talked about communicating with your traditional leaders. That's the executive director, administrator, director of nursing services, director of clinical services, those uh, department heads, those kinds of folks. Now we're going to move our discussion of advocacy into communicating with the government. Now, um, there's a number of things for us to think about when we talk about this, and this is really talking about you as an advocate shaping things like policy, shaping things like funding, shaping things like regulation, shaping the, the experience that the men and women that you care for have. And so over this next, uh, uh, next four weeks, uh, we're going to cover uh, in, in a fair amount of detail things that you could do on the local level, things that you could do on the state level, and things that you could do on the national level. Now, I want to kind of create today as an introduction to each of those three major areas. So let's take a moment and let's look at active uh, advocacy at the local level. So at the local level, there are a variety of things that wonderful nursing assistants just like you are already doing. For example, it is not at all uncommon for nursing assistants like yourselves to be out doing fundraising so that your residents have um, Christmas presents or birthday presents or they have convenience items. That's something that you can do that positively impacts the lives of the women and men that you care for. Also on the local level, you have the opportunity to partner with other people and other organizations to do things that you think are going to benefit the frail, elder, and disabled citizens within your community. For example... Recently, here in the city, uh, in the city of Joplin, uh, they started a project to build a brand new senior center. Well, a brand, that brand new senior center is going to uh, benefit the elders that live in our community. And that might be a project that you want to be a part of. Maybe you want to be out there helping to lobby to get that new senior center built. Or maybe you want to lobby to provide a paratransit system to help older Americans get around to their doctor's appointments and things like that. Because as we all know, most of uh, our elders uh, live on fixed incomes. And so it's not always easy for them to afford to do those sorts of things. So that's something that you could do as a grassroots advocate at the local level to positively impact the lives of the men and women that you have in your community and that may potentially someday require the care that you're so graciously delivering. Now, there are other things to think about too at the local level, and that's really thinking about local policies. And those policies could be like civil ordinances that say, we're going to build new sidewalks um, that are handicapped appropriate. In other words, they're going to make sidewalks with wheelchair ramps so that um, our elders who have limited mobility have an easier time of getting out in the community. Or, per or perhaps um, your community is looking at new, um, a new policy, new regulation around pet ownership and things like that. And so there's a lot of stuff that happens at the local level that you can choose to be involved in. Now, I, I want to take a moment here to make an editorial comment. Um, one of the things that I, I, I hear 
from many people as I've traveled across the country is, you know, I work really long hours and I really just don't feel like I have much time to give to this opportunity. Um, and I, and I want to say this, I'm not asking you to get involved in everything that's happening, but if there's something going on in your community at the local level that you're really passionate about, for example, Meals on Wheels or something of that nature, please do take an opportunity to get involved. It's remarkable how a little bit of time can positively impact the lives of the people around you. So we've looked at things kind of at the local level. Now we're going to look at things at the state level. So when we look at the state level, you're looking at funding issues. Um, I'll give you a perfect example. Not too awfully long ago, in the great state of Oklahoma, they were having some real budget challenges. Um, there was about a $60 million budget shortfall. And so one of the things that the, the, the legislature for the state of Oklahoma was looking at was cutting Medicaid by 25%. Well, since um, nearly two-thirds of the men and women that we care for in the post-acute and long-term care environment receive Medicaid benefit through Sooner Care. Of course, that was something that most nursing assistants in the state of Oklahoma were concerned about. So one of the things that they chose to do was they chose to do a petition campaign where they asked their legislators to please consider not cutting Medicaid so deeply because it was going to have a direct adverse impact on the men and women that they cared for. So that's an example of something that we, that we could look at. Another example of something we could look at also again comes from the great state of Oklahoma, the Sooner State. Go Sooners! Uh, one of the things that's interesting about Oklahoma is they do not allow for distance learning for the certification process for nursing assistants. So nursing assistants in Oklahoma might want to do some sort of advocacy activity to encourage the um, secretary of the department of health and human services for the state of Oklahoma and the board of certification um, to get them to reconsider the policy that says no online uh, education for the certification process. There are, uh, and, and that, that could either take the form of policy or it could take the form of legislation because the secretary might not want to take that action on their own. And so you might have to approach the legis legislators and say, look, we have 30,000 signatures from CNAs in the great state of Oklahoma in support of providing distance learning as a piece of the puzzle for the certification process. So those are some things that you could do on the state level that potentially would positively influence the lives of the men and women that you care for, that would enhance the professional standing of certified nursing assistants, and it would also positively impact the post-acute and long-term care system. Because we all know, for example, that staffing is a challenge. Well, part of that staffing challenge is getting people certified in a timely manner that's also cost effective. So now then we're going to look at the third area where you might choose to participate as an advocate, and that's at the federal level. And when we talk about the federal level, we are talking about funding we're talking about legislation, and we're talking about regulations. So um, this, this past year, um, the federal government um, was able to um, do a tax cut um, for uh, personal taxes. And that is going to benefit a lot of Americans. Uh, there is a flip side to that, though, that we need to consider, and that is this. When the federal government sits down to work on the 2019 and 2020 budgets, there will be fewer dollars for them to allocate. A risk in that is this. There is already conversation about the federal government looking at how they can decrease the expenses around Medicare and Medicaid. 
And since the Medicaid program is a matching fund situation between the federal government and the state government, it's quite possible that the men and women that we care for might experience less um, resources for their care. So one of the ways that you might choose to um, be a, work as a grassroots advocate is by reaching out to your elected officials in Washington, D.C., and saying, hey, look, we understand how hard balancing a budget is. After all, we only make $11 an hour and we have plenty of stuff we have to take care of. And so, um, so we understand the challenges of budgeting. Um, having said that, we really want to encourage you not to negatively impact Medicaid because when you do that, it has real and tangible results for the men and women that we care for at the bedside. It also might be an issue of legislation or regulation. Um, not too awfully long ago, um, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services um, started a process to implement new regulations. Well, prior to the implementation of those new regulations, I believe if my memory serves me correctly, we're now in phase three of that implementation. So back in, in, uh, in 15 uh, and, or 16, I can't remember now exactly which, um, CMS published the draft regulations for public comment. And um, there were over 8,000 individualized responses to that public comment period. And a large number of those folks that were commenting were sharing their perspective were CNAs men and women just like yourselves. And they didn't say don't make new regulations. They asked the federal government to think about realistic implementation and realistic language in the regulations. And believe me, it had an effect. And so that's a way you as an individual might choose to participate in the grassroots advocacy process is by doing public comment for regulations that are coming up, um, by contacting your elected officials, um, by doing those sorts of things. Now, in the coming weeks, we are going to talk in more detail about each of those um, activities. And um, so I hope that you will continue your viewing process and you'll check out Grassroots Advocacy. And uh, so... As we start to wrap today, I'd like to share with you a quote from Thomas Jefferson. Do you want to know who you are? Don't ask. Act. Action will delineate and define you. So I encourage you to take action as a grassroots advocate. Now, before we cut, we before we depart for today, I do have one favor to ask of you. Uh, we are getting to a point where I really want us to start to focus on specific concerns that you are encountering in your care setting, within your profession, and within long-term care, and within your community. So if you will please send me via email or Facebook or even, heck, give me a call. Let's do it the old-fashioned way. But share with me some of your concerns that I, so I can use those examples of specific grassroots activities we can take on that positively impact all of the things that we've talked about. Uh, over these past episodes. I'm really thankful that you've joined me today and I look forward to our next episode.